How does someone who spends their entire year thinking about Pesach, thinking about the Seder, lead their Seder? Rabbi Yechiel Weberman gives us the answers to those questions and much, much more. So many incredible props, so many amazing ideas and resources that he gives over in this episode, which is another part, another one of our reruns for the Seder experience episodes throughout the week. And I hope you'll enjoy Rabbi Weberman is a Rebbe in DRS and a really incredible resource. Without further ado, enjoy this episode. Raising children in general is not easy. Throw in the desire to have passion and committed Jews. Now that's next level hard. With weekly episodes on our parenting hierarchy, you will find the answers to your biggest parenting questions and gain the best practices you need to raise the children the way you want, to raise the Jews next door. It's my pleasure. My wife's putting eight kids to sleep. Amazing. Amazing. So first things first, what inspired you to go into Jewish education in the first place? Money. Why else do people do it? <laughs> I hear you. I don't understand what the other option is. <laughs> um, I wasn't a, a great student. Um, I wasn't even a student to be considered a great student. So school always got in the way of playing basketball. Mm. And I basically wanted to make learning Torah exciting and enjoyable. So when I felt I was connecting to kids... Um, I got a job offer in Hafter, and then I moved on to DRS. Amazing. Yeah. That's awesome. That's so cool. That's great. And wh- how did you get into, how did you become this king of Pesach? Like, where did this, all, where did this come from? I, everything I do in life, I, I care more about having fun than, like, for example, I played ball today. I cared more about having a good time than winning. Yeah. So everything I do, I try to have a good time doing. So we try to make Shabbos enjoyable. We try to make Yontav enjoyable. And um, we try to find things that kids enjoy. So, for example... About seven years ago, I created a project for um, O Nuts called Parsha Candy, mm. where I used to walk around O Nuts yes, with I've a heard Chumash. Of, I've heard of this, the famous Parsha and Candy. And look at their candy, look at the Parsha, and come up with some direct connections, some indirect connections. And um, kids always like candy. So you get the kids, teach the kids about the Parsha through candy. And it was like featured in the stores, like Parsha They have candy? it in O Nuts in all four stores. They have it on the internet. Wow. It's now in Cole Saves uh, Gourmet Glot. Oh my gosh, that's awesome. And um, some of them are a little corny, like Parsha's Vayetze, Seven Gummy Bears for Vayetze Yaakov Mi Bear Sheva. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> nice. But every Parsha we have, you know, my kids know Parsha's Naso because of the Sota explodes. We have Gushers. Mm, nice. Um, but there's really an educational aspect to you. You have a chance to learn about, you know, for example, Tsaras, where you have candy with like white spots on it, et cetera, mm. antique about Lashon Hara, et cetera. That's cool. And I have them for the Yom Tovim as well and Pesach as well. Um, and everybody likes to learn Torah through fun things. So that's how basically the Seder things got started, where you try to make it alive. Totally. And kids to want to be there, you hope. How many years ago did you start this? This being the Pesach Like Seder? the Pesach, yeah. I used to go to my parents in Florida, and one year there was a hurricane on Shemini Atzeres. And... Um, my mom called me up and she said, uh, Yechiel, you know, uh, we're not going to be able to host you for Pesach. Um, I'm like, Mom, if you don't host me, we're never going to come back to you. Right. <laughs> She's like, don't try Jewish guilt. I'm like, I'm not Jewish <laughs> guilt. I'm just saying what's going to happen. And uh, that was six months and her house wasn't ready. So we had to make Pesach. So wow. we found a way to make it. Uh, so whatever, whatever your hurricane uh, Wilma or Irma was, whatever that was, right. um, we had to make our own Seder, and we tried to make it alive. Wow. Every year, we come up with more crazier ideas than the next. That's so cool. So since then, you've been doing it since then? Yep. Wow, amazing. I feel like a lot of people had that during, like, Corona Wars, their first time making Pesach. Yeah. Like, I know for myself, two years ago, I first made Pesach, like, with just me and, just me and like, my immediate family. And I really tried to, like, you know, think of, like, what can I do here? And, like, well, like the Paro costume and, like, a sheave and, all you know, all the different, like, some things just like for like I had a four year old and a, a, a one year old and just like to make it a, a come alive. But like, you know, that, that's, uh, that's amazing. That's yeah. the Corona is really when uh, this sort of took off because uh, many people were forced into making a Seder that never made a Seder right, and never right. ran a Seder. And they always sit back and be a, a guest and suddenly they have to entertain or inspire or run the show for two, three hours. And um, six years ago, Rabbi Leibowitz invited me um, to speak in a shul, Rabbi Ari Leibowitz. And uh, he says, do you want to speak about your Seder in my shul? I said, why would anyone want to <laughs> listen to me? He's like, no, it'll be great. I'm like, listen, Rabbi Leibowitz is a very smart person. I thought like he made a mistake. And he recorded it on YU and many people heard it. And uh, many people heard that year of Corona, uh, found that recording. And uh, gave a lot of insights into people instead of just reading through the Maxwell House Agada. Right, right. So um, that really is, was the starting point to uh, to like, you know, more people hearing about this. And I made a website which people were able to um, 
access, and uh, I say it, it makes the non-creative par- parent creative. Right, right. You know, not, and not everything on my website is going to work for you. So uh, you have to really find things that that work in your house with your kids and and etc. But people make a mistake, and Seder's not about shtick. It's not about props. It's not about fun. It's it's really about transmitting a message. Totally. And you want kids to want to be there, so you have to do whatever's engaging for your children on their age. Um, and uh, that's really the goal of the Seder. The goal of the Seder is not to to have fun. It's to try to relive. And, uh, you know, if you, when, when uh, I mean, New Yorkers don't know from winning, but I'm from Florida. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we've had successful basketball teams. We've the Baseball teams even won a few World Series in my, in my right, lifetime. Right. Um, when you remember the end of a game, you sort of go through the motions. And, you know, he had this shot, this slide, this dunk, this block, et cetera. And you, you literally go through the motions because you're not remembering it. You're trying to relive it. So that's really what we're trying to do in the Seder mm, is, wow, is remember – Remem- not remember, but to relive leaving Mitzrayim. So I spend a lot of time trying to set up uh, an environment um, in my house of what the Seder, of what Mitzrayim will look like. My Seder looks more like a costume party. It looks mm-hmm. more like Purim yeah. than people wearing suits like and ties. Like people say Purim is forever, you know? So. Yeah. Everybody comes dressed up. Right. Right? We buy little Moses costumes. For, and so from the beginning, you're saying. From the beginning of the Seder. Yeah, wow. That's um, awesome. in, in, in Moses costume, Egyptian costumes. And, yeah, we already, uh, if you could see, if, if you're looking at the video, you can we'll see some have, of the stick we got going we'll on here already. Over here, you know, a uh, uh, the muscle man, the muscle man outfit, um, and and you can get. The, I saw that on your website for the mean for the mean Egyptian, right? The mean Egyptian, <laughs> yeah, and, that's awesome. And you can have the pool noodle to to hit people, which doesn't hurt, right? But but the real goal is 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 transmitting the story of the miracles that happened, and. Ironically, despite all of my shtick, I, I barely say any Dvar Torah at my, my Seder. Hmm. Um, I, I don't, I mean, I'm a big Dvar Torah person, but not at the Seder. I, I look for stories that transmit the following message of, of Hashem loving us. Um, when you know, I actually have over here a piece of paper that says HLM. I don't know if hmm. you can zoom in on it yeah. or not, but um, I go around the Seder and I ask my kids, uh, what does this stand for? And they say, Hashem loves me. And when they, when they say that, they get some version of, uh, of uh, this, that. Okay, I'll zoom in. Uh, of, yeah. Hashem, uh, of money. And I want them to hear the words, Hashem loves me. Wow, that's awesome. Um, and I, I go through many, many storybooks uh, just looking for stories that Hashem loves you. Because when you go through a challenging time, but you know that Hashem loves you, it makes that challenging time significantly easier. Whether it be, God forbid, health or financial or finding a shidduch or a job, whatever it is. And uh, face it, everybody's got challenging you know, parts of life. And right, uh, sure. the night of the Seder, I try to transmit the message that we are leaving Mitzrayim. We're not leaving the land of Egypt, but we're leaving the mentality, which means if you're addicted to something or you have struggles with something, you have limitations on something, the night of the Seder is the night you're leaving it and you're going to be successful because God loves you. Right. Like they say, Mitzrayim instead of Mitzrayim, like the Mitzrayim, we're leaving our borders, whatever. Our boundaries or limitations. Exactly. So, sure. so when it comes to the night of the Seder, I actually don't say many different Torah. Mm-hmm. Um, I just, stories, um, stories of Amuna. Where, where do you find these stories? Um, so my kids remember every story I've ever said. Wow. And I'll come and say, guys, I got a new story for you. I've never said it. They're like, Tati, you say that every week. <laughs> um, every year Hashem in his infinite kindness sends me a book within two weeks of Pesach. Really? Last year I found the book and I don't get paid for this, but it's called 102 Stories That Change People's Lives. Really? And I think about 75 of them are really changed people's lives. Wow. They're just amazing. amazing. They're not good. They're amazing. Um, this year I'm... Um, Currently reading through um, Living Amuna six, mm. um, and and again that, every that's sh- the one that is your pre Pesach two weeks before this year. I don't know. I I, I don't know. Um, I, I'm not sure. Right. I'm still. I still, I still have that, time to get to two you. weeks. <laughs> but um, I I've actually you know I document stories and and uh, I, I I write them down and I try to repeat them. Today uh, I found a great story flipping through a uh, flipping through a, uh, a Rabbi Spiro on benching. Mm. The last piece he had was a story in August 11, 2021, a young boy named Yosef Shapiro who uh, went with his camp to um, camp. to went, They went on a trip somewhere and he got lost. And he's painting a picture of the mother sitting in the Hatzalah um, mobile with a thousand people looking for him and, and the fear that his mother had and right. the yearning of her holding and hugging her son again. And as the dark, the day is getting ender, uh, the day is getting darker, and people are searching, and it gets nighttime, which makes the rescue even more difficult. The mother's fear, the mother praying, yearning to hold and hug her child again. And at one point, some Hatzalah guy finds him sleeping under a uh, under under a bench. And this is a true story. We're, we're, in New York, we remember this happening last yeah. last year. Yeah, yeah, of course. And bringing the kid back to his mother and that initial embrace. Yeah, I can't. can't and he said, yeah, well. "But that's Geula." 
Mm. That's Gula. Kodesh Baruch Hu sitting in heaven waiting for his kids to come. And I'm going to try to paint that picture. Hopefully my kids won't see this. <laughs> then they would have heard the story already. <laughs> but I'm just saying a story like that was a gift from God for me today because that's a great story to paint the picture. And it's real. Yeah. You know, this happened a year ago and not even. Not that's even a year ago. Story. So so I look for stories that God loves us and that will help us escape our own boundaries, escape our own limitations, escape our own struggles. And, and uh, we go through the stories. There, there's a book called Let My Nation Go. Yeah, sure. I, I think people fail to realize that's probably the Iker Mitzvah because mm-hmm. that's just midrashim of what the Mitzvah did to us and, and how they tortured us, et cetera. Yeah. So, so that's, uh, that, that's really the goal of my Seder. I have loads of, of props around the house, but that's just like to get kids pique their interest. It's not yeah. really the message. Totally, yeah. totally. And you, you said that you document the stories. Is that available on your website? No, like where do you put I, that? I, I document it. What I do, one of my, I have on my website a list of ideas to, to run a Seder. Mm-hmm. Um, and one of the, my ideas is, is, is print out your own Haggadah. Um, and, and what I do is, is it's just a text, but then I write by each part of the Haggadah what I'm going to do and what I'm going to say. Right. So I'm going to write down this year, I'm saying this story at this point, mm-hmm. and I'm um, doing this prop at that point. And um, some people, you know, have, have, stories from their family of, of survivors from Holocaust. And those stories should be repeated every year because they did leave, you know, they did leave their own uh, slavery that year. And, and I wasn't so good to that because my, my mother's parents are African-American. They're from Morocco. And uh, my father's parents were, came on the boat with uh, Christopher Columbus. So oh, I don't wow, have any wow. European, they weren't really, but they've been in America right, for right, a long right, time. Right. Wow. I don't have European stories. So, so I don't have those family stories, but people who do should be repeating those every year. So I don't, I don't have them for other people because the story that you say, you, say, you got to love your stories. Yeah. You can't just repeat. You got to connect. You got to connect with it. Before. Not the st- every story you read, you're going to love. And yeah. there's nothing wrong with the story. Just it's got to speak to you. So I write the stories that I love and I put them in my Haggadah, in my own Haggadah. And I say, say over this story. And I have a separate book of stories um, to glance at. But you really got to prepare. You know, I, I compare it to like the Jets. Like when they play football, you, you think they didn't prepare at all. Right. And you can't come to the Seder that way. Um, the more preparation you do, the smoother your Seder is going to flow. I, I spoke in Florida this past week, and when I finished one of the speeches, a guy came up to me and said, you spent a lot of time speaking about before the Seder, but you didn't speak about the Seder. And I said, first of all, I did. And second of all, <laughs> if you do enough preparation before the Seder, the Seder doesn't need it just to, goes, it's right. just going to go. Yeah. So I spend a lot, a lot, a lot of time preparing in all aspects of the Seder. One of them is stories. Mm-hmm. Um, another of them is something as simple as the night before the Seder, I... Um, I prepare all the bags of mar. I have a scale. Really? Wow. I have a scale. I actually saw that on your website. I saw that you have a scale to have prepare a scale. it. Right. Yeah, so I have, a, I have a list of measurements from Rabbi Benjamin Forst, and I calculate how many adults there are going to be for each Seder, and then I make a bag for mar. I make a bag of mar for karch. I make a bag of matzah. I make a bag for matzah for karch. And the shot is just to like not lose the time That's on that. it. It's not halachic. It's, it's just, you know, breaking matzah is not like cutting challah. Mm. And if you have, it takes an hour to do yeah. on the night before Pesach, but if you have more than five or so adults at your Seder, handing out matzah to everybody, yeah. it's just you're going to lose people. So that's an hour of preparation to save 20 minutes each night, if not more, because you're handing out more. I have bags. They're just they're just bags I'm of like more, <laughs> Ziploc bags that come yeah. with an extra 50, 75 Ziploc bags, and it just goes. So that preparation helps your Seder flow smoother. And it's not about ending it. It's about not losing people because it's a long night, this night of the Seder. Yeah, that's a smart idea. But the more preparation that you do, in, in all aspects, go through the Haggadah and become familiar. And my own personal Haggadah that I print out, I have in big letters, you know, cover matzah, lift wine, et cetera. So you're not trying to figure out at what point you're doing it. Right, right. And, uh, and then again, that's all part of preparation. So if you prepare a lot, you don't need to prepare as much for the Seder, right. during the Seder. That's true. And so every year you're using your own Haggadah. You're not using like Jirasha Haggadah. Like, no. no. I'll, I'll copy and paste a Dvar Torah, a story or a prop into my Haggadah. Mm-hmm. But my Haggadah looks like uh, eight by 11 pieces of paper that are that have the text, but my own notes in it gotcha. um, instead instead of trying to, to find the Haggadah to, to write in it. It's just nice. much easier. Very cool. So you yeah. said it's, it's a lot about preparing before the Seder. So, yeah. you say, so you prepare with the stories, you prepare with some of these props, you know, and then and then you prepare with the, you know, what you're doing at which point, the Haggadah, any yeah. other things that should be prepared. I mean, besides, and, and besides for the bags of the Mara and the Mazda yeah, and all that. Yeah, I, I try to get the kids excited leading up to Pesach. Um, on my website, I have posters um, that look like Egyptian posters, and, and I, have, I have pictures. Um, I have pictures of, of, uh, of Pesach pictures. I'll show you some over here. Um, some of the pictures 
you know, for example, this picture I post up on the wall. Oh, wow. And this is to get the kids to say, what is this? Well, that looks like a weird, colorful <laughs> coat. Well, that's, yeah. that's Yosef's coat. And that's how we ended up in Mitzrayim. Uh, nice. And then I got a picture of a fire, which is Moshe speaking at the, the, burning, uh, the bush. burning bush. Nice, nice. And I have lots of pictures of corresponding to hard work and some of the makos. Um, I have these all on my, on my website, and um, and you're you're like lifting it up there as you're telling over no, the no, story. No, this no. is it's around the house. This I put up around the house uh-huh. of, uh, every night leading up to Pesach. Um, I put up new stuff. So when the kids wake up in the morning, they'll mm-hmm. see new posters, they'll see new pictures, they'll see bricks, they'll see um, you know my carbon Pesach. <laughs> nice. um, they'll see they'll see stuffed animals. Um, and it's all about the buildup of leading to the excitement of what's going on. And I don't use the same props. So it's every like, year. it's really felt. It's really, it's felt really felt. Me. Yeah. So th- that, that's what I want them to, to see, you know, what, what are we going to see tomorrow morning when you wake up and, and not everything is an exact like understanding. So for example, if you want to be corny, you know, you put up something like this, say, what's that? Well, <laughs> well that's a ruler. Paro was a ruler. Okay. Uh, but sometimes uh, it's not, it's more obvious. You could put a t-shirt with blood. You could put a, um, sneakers for running away. You could put a, a suitcase, you know, we're, we're leaving. Um, nice. and sometimes Sometimes the goal is just to get the kids to think. Right. So like to think about what that connection is. Even exactly. Right. Because, because, you know, your definition of slavery might be my freedom. For example, if you have a cell phone for a 15 year old, that's the ultimate freedom. But for a parent, that might be slavery. Right. <laughs> and, and that's really the message is because your slavery is different than mine. And uh, everybody's got to leave their slavery. Mm. You have to view yourself as you're leaving. So right, right. we're trying to prepare the, the, the mentality that we're getting, you know, when you get excited for a trip, that's what we're doing. Totally. And so two questions. Number one, for older kids who are not necessarily as drawn into this stuff, what, what, do, you, what do you do for them? Um, what I do for them is the following. First of all, just call a spade a spade. It's harder to get the older kids hooked in. Yeah. Um, what I do is, is the following, is, is I try to make them involved in two ways, either preparing for the Seder. So, for example, if they're going to shred the mar, they're going to be looking forward to the mar. Yeah. They're, uh, um, if they're going to be making the harosas, whatever they're going to be getting involved Right, they're putting in. their work into yeah, it. I would today. say making the salt water, but today, thank God, Baruch Hashem, you could buy salt <laughs> water pre-made um, for those who have struggled. The, the recipe is either salt and water or water and salt. Yeah. I don't remember the, the exact recipe. <laughs> for for uh, like $10, you could buy a yeah, you you know, small little like... Uh, salt water, yeah, thank God. So we don't need to make salt water anymore. And actually, I think they just came out with also prepackaged pieces of bread, just in case you can't figure out how to do that. Um, the can't tell if like when I see those things, like that's just like a joke or like that's like real, because I think it's actually real. But. I think it is. And if people will buy it, sell it. Um, what I do is the following. And, and, and this is the older kids feed off the younger kids excitement. Now the mm-hmm. older kids have no interest in seeing props, right? What I do is I get the older kids. I sort of take a back seat by some of the props and tell the older kids, to run it. you be the taskmaster, oh, nice, you be nice. the mean mitzri. Cool. And that they're willing to do. Yeah. And at the end of the day, the goal is to get them involved. Um, I say, do me a favor, just participate in one prop one prop. So, so that is, that is, that's the way I get older kids involved, um, either by having them prepare something or getting involved. I do two other things to get the older kids involved. And it's really, it's really one other thing. And, and I do have to say to one of preparation, um, I, I give them a, a job. For example, last year I told everybody to come to the Seder with something representing slavery or freedom. So my eight-year-old daughter says, Tati, when does school end? I'm like, June. She goes, that's freedom. <laughs> and she's right. right. And she's for right. For her, that's what it is. And, and, and for awesome. some people, it's, you know, they're, they're, they're on a diet. And for some people, they left their new their job and they can't stand their old job. And, and everybody came to the Seder excited to show their picture, their object of slavery or freedom. Um, and older kids don't like the props as much because they also can see through it. But right. the, I, I have a, a list of questions um, that, that I get kids to, to want to express. You know, I have them on my website, either topics of conversation, fun mm-hmm. questions, easy questions. And, and, and the goal is to get your mind thinking. You know, um, this year, um, I know you're from West Hempstead. Um, I'm very close with Rabbi Kellimer's son. Mm. And he told me his father, Allah Vashalom, used to ask the following question. But before he asked the question, he said, I don't want you to answer it. And the question was the following. Of the four children, which one do you think Hashem felt closest to? Chacham, the Russia, the Tom Shane Daily Show. Mm. And his son explained to me that the reason why my father didn't want you to answer is because he wanted you to think that Hashem could be close to everybody. Right, right. And when you have questions like that, it's like, is, is you know, are we a slave? Is, do you need to have a Seder in your life? Maybe it's better to go to life without a Seder. What are we free from? You know, wh- what, are, what are we slaves to? 
What are, you know, so I go around the Seder and say, what are we slaves to? What's your definition of freedom? So my father-in-law is an accountant. This year it's perfect. Freedom for him is April right, 16th, right, right. you know? So, so, and for other people, you know, you go through, and I was once at a Seder, I remember last year, my father, I said, you know, what's bitter in your life? My father looks at me and he says, I have nothing bitter, which was an amazing answer to me. Yeah, huh? and everybody can say, you know, it's bitter. I'm, I'm a little financial trouble. I'm a little this, a little that. Health, everything is what Hashem wants them to be. So that's also a lesson for everybody. But kids are excited to say, even the teenagers, what's bitter? Oh, I can't stand my science teacher. You know, right. I'm, I'm <laughs> having trouble with this and going well. Right. So, so kids are really excited to, to do that. And then you try to find questions. And not every question on my website will work for you and your family. Right. Um, you know, and, and, uh, and that's what I tried to do is spend time figuring out which questions would, would speak to the older kids because the older kids really enjoy um, getting the younger kids involved. So right. that's a great way to get the older kids involved. That's a, that's a great point. Wow. That's, that, those are very, very good points. Um, okay, so... Do you yeah. ever tell somebody it's not a good point? What? Do you ever tell somebody it's not a good point? I don't think I ever have. All right, even if you think it's not a good... All right, just curious. I guess I never have, have thought anyone's had a bad point. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> it's a good question, good question. <laughs> See, there you go. That's it's good to get it out, yeah. <laughs> um, so, you know, the night of the theater, parents are really doing a lot of the educating. You know, p- kids come home, they have stuff that they want, but, you know, like, like you're, you're leading it. Yeah. Right? So how do, how can, you know, you, you have, you said you have, like, tips of how parents can lead a Seder. Yeah. How do parents become educators to really lead an educational process? Especially, you know, like Baruch Hashem, we're both educators. Right. Right. We run in for the money, as you said, but for the parent, for the parents who are, who are not formal educators, you know, like the whole premise of this podcast is that we're all educators because we're educating our children throughout, you know, their lives of how to be a Jew and what's important in, in Judaism. But for anyone who's not formally an educator, how do they, how do they, you know, just all of a sudden pays a night. Okay, let's, well, let's do yeah, this. That's a great question. The answer, I believe, is, is getting back to my story idea. And that is, like, when you say a story, you got to love it. You, if you don't believe in what you're doing, you don't have to be an educator to run a Seder. You have to believe in God. Mm. And you have to believe in what the message you're trying to transmit. So, for example, I have a goal of my Seder. My goal of my Seder is that people should walk out knowing God loves them. Now, if, And that's for both star and that's like the every year. That's, that's the it. same. Okay. That's the same thing. Um, a student of mine once told me that uh, before he lies to his parents, he has to convince himself he's telling the truth. <laughs> 16 year old told me that. <laughs> That's very profound. It is. If you don't believe in what you're saying, no one's going to believe you. Right. So you may not be a formal educator where you're standing in front of a class teaching or grading and marking tests. But if you don't believe in the message you're giving over, if you're trying to get the Seder over as quick as possible, your kids will see through it. If you're trying to leave your own Mitzrayim, if you're trying to accept and, and understand that God loves you, then your kids will see it. So that that's it, is is spend time preparing for the Seder, understanding what your goal is. Well, I'm not telling you what your goal should be. For me, it's a Muna. How do, how do I teach that? By living it. By, by trying to, 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 to learn about a Muna myself all year, so when it comes up to the Seder, um, you're, 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 you're showing your kids what you learned. Now, there, there's, a, there's a fort we see in the modern day vernacular, a Kolba Seder. A Kolba Seder means everything's okay. Everything's going to be okay. But a Kolba Seder means your whole year of, of, of growth could be found in the Seder. And that can't start, the, you know, in, right before Marv on, on the night of Pesach. So you may not be the best teacher or formerly prepared teacher, but if you believe in what you're selling, then you'll be able to sell it. You know, so so that's uh, an educated consumer. You walk into a store right. and right. you did research on the project or the object that you want to buy. That that's That's it. That's a solid point. That's a very solid point. Solid Change point. it instead of good, you know. Solid. No, I mean, some people don't have solid points. You don't have to agree with that. No, no, say. no, it's very true. You really have to really believe it in order to, and that's that's true as an educator. I Meaning, when you're coming to class, if you're really, if you if you believe what you're teaching, if you're giving, your, even whatever it is, the Gemara, the Machshava, the Halach, the the, hum, the Chumash, whatever you're teaching, if you are, if you really feel this, it's going to come over. It's going to come through. You know, they say Noah spent 120 years building the Teva because. Shem wanted him to be a car of people. Right. And how many people did he get besides his family? Zero. Right. That's pretty bad. Can you imagine like NCSY having a million dollar year budget <laughs> and after a year calling the top guys and saying, how many people did you get? They're like, none. They're like, okay, it's a rough, but our budget's going up. Okay, we'll give you another year. Right. After 120 years, you got nobody. How is that possible? So Rabbi Franz once quoted somebody. He said that, that Mekatni Amana, he, was, he lacked in Amuna. And if he didn't believe in him, in, in it himself, he only went in because Mibnei Right, right, right. So mm. if you don't believe in, in whatever you're selling, then no one's going to believe you. And yeah. therefore, he didn't believe that Mabel was going to come, yeah. according to that shot. And therefore, very true. you don't have to be an educator. You just have to actually believe in what you're, you're doing and the message you're trying to get across. And that will only happen if you prepare. 
Yeah. If, like they say, if you if you fail to prepare, preparing to fail. That's right. So, what, you know, wh- take us through, wh- once you get to the actual Seder itself, what, is, what does the Seder look like in your home? I mean, like, you know, we speak, we speak speaking a lot about the preparation. Now we're in the Seder, right? What, what's going on? How do you start it off? How do you get it going? Like, you know, how, you, know you have everything around. You have this big frog. Like, what, what's, what's, you know, what's it, going it's, on? It's, my kids know it's my most stressful night of the year because I prepare so much for it. Yeah. Showing patience is the ultimate sign of a Muna. Uh-huh. And once or twice in the Seder, I'll have to get up and just take a deep breath because... I have so much that I want to give over, um, and you just have to be relaxed. The most important thing on the night of the Seder is being relaxed. It's got to be a positive experience where the kids want to be there. And you have, for lack of a better term, I don't mean rules, but like kids, listen, tonight we're going on a journey. Like literally we're going on a journey, and, and, it, and it ends with me chasing the kids through the Amsuf, literally and figuratively. Um, and, uh, and, and you have to be relaxed. You try to start off with a joke. My kids never find my jokes to be funny. <laughs> Um, they like my stories. They don't like my jokes. And, um, and, 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 you know, the Seder, the table should not be set. You want to set yourself up with as much success as possible. You don't have things in the way. You need a, like a kosa plate and a gada. That's it. And I tell kids, listen, we're, we're going on a journey. We got to respect everybody. You know, you could say X amount of divrei Torah. Um, we're going to have a great time tonight. I'm going to be rewarding you as much as I can. And I uh, hand out these, these Seder shkalim and, and, and the kids got to know that they're getting rewarded. It's the one night I, I openly bribe my kids to participate, and I make sure to reward them on the first day of Um And my kids know that. With, like, what does that look like? So one of the things that I do is that I um, I give these seder shkalim. Right. So for asking good questions, participating, etc. Yeah. So great. what I do is is I keep in my mind how much money do I want to give my kid? How much money is it worth it for me? for my kid to participate in the Seder. So for example, let's say I come up with the number $20. So I keep on giving the kids Seder school. And they said, how much is each one worth? I said, I'm not telling you. Mm-hmm. So if they get a hundred, I'll tell you right. each one's worth 20 <laughs> cents. If they got 50, each one's worth 40 cents. Uh-huh. So it. I will either, for the younger kids, I'll buy them a toy, I'll buy them candy, I'll buy them a present. The older ones, older ones I'll give money. And the ones in the between, I'll say, what do you want? Right. So but, is this an addition to Avi Kohn present? This is I, like, I'm not an you know, Avi Kohn This is uh, a participation. Like, yeah. is, okay. I, I don't care who steals my Avi Kohn. I just make sure I get it back. Right, right. <laughs> um, but the the older kids and my oldest kids say, like, don't give me the coins, just give me the money. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like, they don't care about that. But the point is, is that they know they're getting rewarded the first right. day of Chalmoid. So it's not like we're going to wait for something to come out. If not, I'll put the money in an envelope and say, go for it. Right. It's yours. And so what's that? What is that involvement? I mean, for you, what, what, when, it, when are you giving your children one these, of these? Yeah. Whenever I can. For anything, anything that I could. Anything at all that Anything they, I could. They're sitting still nicely. They complimented another person. They asked a good question. They helped. They, it just, you want them to want to be at the table, so you just want to keep, you, you just, want them to be just there. Giving it just out, giving yeah. it out as much as possible because you want them to want to be there. Nice. And if you're handing out candies and if you're handing out shkalem, they're going to want to be there. Totally. And um, so you want to be as positive and relaxed as possible. Um, and you want to set everything up in advance as much as possible. I open up my bottles of wine before Pesach. Oh, wow. I separate boxes of matzah before Pesach, one that's wow, says wow. whole and broken. Yeah, that's so awesome. you don't got to come to the Seder and figure out that your matzahs are broken then. Yeah. Do that before Yontiv. Um, you know, if I didn't buy salt water, we'll make salt water <laughs> before. I have a list uh, of, of Erev Yontiv things to do. Um, cause most of us don't grind Mara on Erev Shabbos. So you have like things that you don't regularly do. You don't regularly make Erev Tafshilin. You don't regularly, right. you know, grind Mara or, or, or make Harosas, et cetera, salt water. Um, and the less you have to do at the Seder, the smoother it'll go, but you have to just be relaxed and positive. Totally. Totally. And you know, obviously your children are coming home with, uh, you know, different Torah from school that they want to give over. Yeah. So how do you balance that with everything that you, you know, like you were saying before, like you come in, you prepared so much and you have so much you want to do with them, but you want them, you want to also empower them to give over their different Torah and feel excited about that. So how do you, how does that, how do you balance that? I give them sticky notes and um, I say to them, listen, you could say three different Torah, but I prepared a hundred. <laughs> the next day, sit down and say, I want to hear everyone. But at the night of the Seder, it's just call a spade a spade. It's not easy for everybody to listen to, you know, 9, 10, 11, 12 mm-hmm. year olds say different Torah. Totally. It's not. Yeah. Um, even though I, as a parent, I can listen to them all day and night, but for everybody else, it's very hard. Um, the siblings, the other people, it's just, it's, it's, it's nice, but it's not easy to listen to. Um, there's a mitzvah of Egarat to Labincha, which means you have a mitzvah to teach your child, not your child to teach you. Right, right. So, I mean, if I designed the perfect world, I, I would have, you know, the, the teach this kids in school learn questions and give the parents the answers. I think mm. that would be much more effective yeah. than saying Divrei Torah. Not that I'm anti-Divrei Torah. I'm just at the Seder. 
it's about the parent teaching a child. And um, so I give them sticky notes and I give them a number. And then I try to make sure I hear the rest of the Devere Torah throughout Yantav. So, and so sticky notes feel. are meaning for them to choose which three that they're giving over. And they're going to know and put them in there. And then their, you have it in your, I mean, you have a plan that, or. You know, you could say that's number one of yours, that's number two, et cetera. Got it, got it, got it. Wow, that's so smart. Yeah. That's so smart. So, uh, okay, let, let's get through these visuals a little bit. Let's, uh, what, what, Has what anyone ever it? said an idea you thought was not smart? <laughs> I shouldn't ask these questions? All right, whatever. Um, <laughs> So I have, I have, I put things around my house. So one of the things I put around my house is uh, things representing slavery or freedom. So we got like, um, okay. a, you know, it's interesting. You could put a key, a key could be a lock or an unlock, right? right? This is obviously slavery. So for, the, for those listening, just to describe what we're, oh. we're looking at some handcuffs. Okay. Looking um, at put, some, some chains. These, nice. Uh, on my website, I have lists and things to buy. Okay. I will, I will be posting the link to the website. This no is, this is chains. You know, that's slavery. Nice. Um, this could be. A few things. A this is a bone. bone. Yeah. So it could be the dog that didn't bark. Oh, it could be okay. the carbon paste that can break, oh, break the bone. Nice, nice. Or it could be they worked this to the bone. Mm. Um, the, the, this is is what I call a um, keep focus card because I, I like to half jokingly, half seriously say I'm the un undiagnosed, unmedicated ADD kid. Uh, so what I do is I have loads of these. And I give each child a few of them. And get three shots. Yeah. Okay, so basically, some of them will say, hand this, hand this coin in at, uh, hand this coin in by the Manishtana and get a Seder shekel. So depending on the age of the child, I'll give them four or five and I'll say, hand this card in and at the first cup and get a Seder shekel. So he's get, or she's going to be waiting to get to the Manishtana or the first cup. You know, the older kids will be ask a question at this point. Uh -huh. So, what's the point of if just have, having them hand in the card? What's your what's the your point thought process? Is that they're, they're focused just uh, that they're focusing and getting yeah, to it. Okay. Yeah. So, uh. one of the things that I do um, is um, I try to say the story wrong. And when you say the story wrong, uh, for them to point it out. Yeah. But now, the more mistakes you make, the more they're going to listen. Uh -huh. So these cards keep them like, when are we going to get up to the Manishtan or the fourth cup, the third right. cup of Adima, you know. Uh This I put around. It's kind of nasty. It looks like. Uh -huh. Somebody who drank Bloody a lot teeth. of alcohol, nice. and missing a lot of teeth. But Haka Ashinova, that they knocked the uh, teeth mm, out of the uh, out of the Russia's mouth. Nice. Um, during the uh, Choshech, um, I uh, I put a, I got a lot of fake jewelry. Like these things, I go to is parties that for a Hushka doll, or is that something else? I'll, I'll explain in a second. Uh, you can go to Party City. I go to Party City and thrift shops, and and I find you know th this particular um, Tzvardea. Awesome I, I found product. in. Uh, I found in uh, Costco in June time. So I was thinking of Pesach then already. Um, but this I found in Party City. And, and what I do basically is, if you remember the mannequin challenge, where, um, where, um, where, where, where people stood still and froze. Yeah, sure. So we do that during Choshech. And then the, this was hidden under couches and other stuff. So the kids go looking for it. That, that's, that's when I use this uh, uh, fake tour. They go around looking for it. Nice. Nice. Um, that's cool. If okay. some people don't and object. if they find it, do you, is that a check? Oh, the thing like about a, the little kids is they enjoy taking just, just, Yeah, they oh, get they, to they, keep half of it. So this nice. bag used to be much more and we fill <laughs> it every couple of years. Um, I put this on my doorpost. Nice. Um, this is painter's tape. It's supposed to come off without the paint. <laughs> um, That's great. And I have, uh, this is a gift from, uh, uh, my wife probably found it, to be honest. On my website, I have it. This is like background paper for class. Um, it, oh, nice. It's four feet high. Um, we put candy on it or fish. On either um, one or two walls. Just for those who are who are listening, we're looking at a a nice you know background poster of water, basically. Yep. To, to use. Nice. And if you have like a staircase where you could put it, so you, you put it on two walls, and then the kids get chased through it. And there's mm. that's where Chushkado. They care about candy, and nice. you put candy on the walls or at the at the bottom, and uh, you chase them out, and then you can have Paro get uh, tumbled over. Um, yeah, I, I actually, <laughs> I, I have blow up instruments nice. that when we left. The no, no, when they left. But you got to blow these up before right. uh, before Yantiv. That's on your list of prep to do before. Yeah, <laughs> that is. That's on my list of, you know, the, let's go, the things to do. Um, Mrs. Kamenetsky, um, my Menahel's wife, last year or two years ago gave me a great idea. Um, it's called headbands. Um, oh, yes, yes. The greatness to headbands is not the game, but it's when you play it. And this is an important thing she told me, and it really came out great, is that when you find your Seder getting stale, yeah. when you find your Seder like having a rough time, Time to play a game, mm -hmm. and the bed, the headbands are, are really a great way to get kids, yeah, uh, right. kids get involved. back in. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. So, um, I have here a a a, a white a white. Uh, is that a white beard? beard? Nice. Yeah. White what does this what's this have to do with Pesach? Is that, is that Moshe's beard? Is that no? Uh, how do you know Moshe had a white beard? Maybe it's a redhead. That's a good question. Yeah, that's a good, good point. Um, this could be Elio and Navi. Okay. It could how do you also, know Elio and Navi had a white beard? Uh, because he was old. Okay. Um, Rabbi Lazar Ben Azaria 
went to sleep at 18, woke up looking like 70. Uh, okay. Nice. So that's you, good. That's you, very good. You I like really, that. <laughs> you really got to just find, look through the Seder and, and just try to put things coming alive. That's, that's so how do you make the text of the, of the Haggadah come alive? Meaning is it, is it strictly through this or is it, are there other things that you're doing as you're giving a ring? Like, are you mainly just reading through the text and like showing things? Like how, how do you like, I actually speed read a lot. Uh-huh. Um, I don't spend a lot of time with the Yukim on, on words and stuff like that. Got it. My kids know a story of a Nitzak they cried out and does anybody have a story or, or I'll ask a question of, you know, like, have you ever had an opportunity and where, where you felt challenged and struggled and, and you saw Hashem help you? Mm-hmm. Um, and I'll bring that out through the Haggadah. Um, and, and I, the whole Haggadah for me is trying to make it personal. Right. Right. That, that's what it is. So, so where can you say Dayenu? You know, what could you say Dayenu about in your life? And, uh, and everybody at the Seder, whoever they might be, age, gender, doesn't make a difference, will tell their experience of how they could say Dayenu. So I, I'll go through the, the Haggadah, but the part that I'm not speaking about, I'm not saying a Devar Torah, I'm, I'm not saying a story, I'm not doing a prop, I read quickly. Got it. Um, a lot of kids like to sing these days. If you're able to help them, I'm not as talented in that. <laughs> but I do try to, to show from the, the paragraph that we're reading how it's relatable to either me or to you or our family society that's going on in the world. You and know, is that something that you're preparing before pays off yeah, of like, 100%. here's what I want to try to make sure to give over from this paragraph. 100%. Got it. 100%. And that's is why that he's... something that in your, you know, the, the, the ADD Haggadah that you put out? Or no, that's my, not, AD, that's, my ADD Haggadah is really, just a, it's just to get people who have a hard time. Fr- I wrote the Torah that, that spoke to me. Just uh, to go back, you know, yeah. for anyone who doesn't know, the ADD Haggadah is, is one of Rabbi Orman's, like, you know, big things, is, you know, ADD Divrei Torah each week of, to keep it under 60 seconds, right? My, not under 60. My ADD, 60 seconds, my ADD sorry, 60 Torah seconds. is exactly 60 seconds. Yeah. I have my ADD Divrei Torah on, on the Haggadah and the Seder is short Divrei Torah um, without a lot of details and introduction, just boom. Uh, kids like that because they just want to say Divrei Torah to make their mom or dad happy. Right. The parents are happy because the kids are involved and everybody's happy. Um, but but it, when I go through the Haggadah, and, and sometimes it'll hit me during the Seder or a different message, but... but you know, when you think about what's going on in the world in your own personal life and you look around the Seder and, and, and see, you know, he or she went through this struggle this year and, you know, God forbid somebody was sick and they got better. And, uh, you know, my, my father-in-law had a rough year this past year and Baruch Hashem, he's better. And he overcame that 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 uh, that illness, Baruch Hashem. And somebody who might have gotten a new job, somebody might have gotten to the next stage of his life, yeshiva, college, engaged, whatever it might be. So... So you, you hear what's going on in the world and, and, and the wars and the struggles and say, how does that relate to us? And 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 that's really when you go through the, the Haggadah before, read through the Haggadah and say, you know, what's this paragraph talking about? And I don't have, you know, despite my my lengthy preparations, my Seder is not that long. It's mm-hmm. three and a half hours long, which is, wow. considering we mostly start at 9, 12, 30, 12, 45, it's, it's not that yeah, long. Yeah. Um, but it moves. There, there's not a lot of downtime. Got there's it. not a lot of downtime. But going through each paragraph, yeah, it, it's how does this fit in with, with Hashem Loves Me? Right. Do you have go-to like Haggadahs that you use to help you prepare those thoughts? Meaning, yeah, I know you mentioned before, let my nation go yeah. and stories that you're looking up, but also like Haggadahs to use to help you, you know, give over that message or, or not really so much. No, it, it it's like I said before, you got to live it. Um, those are great different Torah, but to get the message across, I, I go to the farm store and say, what sto- book do you have on stories of Amuna? Uh, but I don't have a specific Haggadah. I mean, I have my Rebbeim's Torah that I, I enjoy learning and share them that I hear, enjoy hearing people say. And sometimes, you know, it, it'll hit a chord. Um, and, and my Rebbeim are from the biggest Litvak to the biggest Chassid and everything in between because right. it's just Torah is Torah. So, so it's really um, whoever I can learn from. It, it's, it's sometimes it'll be a, something I heard on, on Wayu Torah or sure. All Parsha or OU Torah or... Mm-hmm. My Rebbe from Florida, Rabbi Zweig, my Rebbe, Rabbi Yeager, Rav Shore. It's not a, necessarily one specific one. You know, you pick up one and Hashem sends you to the right Dvar Torah, but it's not about the Dvar Torah, it's about the message, right, I think. Right, right, right. So it, it's... Any recommendations for storybooks that you would recommend? Well, I told you 102 um, right, stories that changed right. people's lives. Um, the Living Amunas are, 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 are just... Yeah, it's amazing. changed my life. Uh, wow. th- there's, there's, It's really, really unbelievable. Those I've, I found to be the best, but I, I found that... If you're looking for something, you'll find it. So even you and I can read the same story and come out with a completely different message. Right, totally. Um, so but sometimes people don't even know what to be looking for, right. which is so, hard. So for me, it's, it's, it's a Muna. Uh, um, you know, I, I have something else besides, um, besides uh, um, the, the, what's it called? Besides HLM, it's faith, 
which is, I think Rav Shmuel Brazil said this, forward all issues towards Hashem, mm, which is wow. the same idea. I love the that. The same idea as Hashem loves me. And God's taking charge, you know. Um, it, it is one, one of the other preps I do is I, I hang up my... Um, my, my water, my Kriyas Yamsuf, but we have signs around the house that say Yamsuf this way. Right. You know, um, you can come up with other creative signs. You can find them online. Um, one of the other things I do, I think I got this idea from Rabbi John Green from YU. Mm. Um, if you're having a big Seder, meaning a lot of people, get Seder uh, um, uh, table. Uh, the place cards? Place cards. Yeah. Um, place cards help because you don't want to spend a lot of time figuring out who's sitting next to who. And also, the place cards that I have on my website are, look like plane tickets, which a lot of details. Um, where, where, where kids could, you know, speaking about the, the date when we're leaving and we're leaving from Egypt to Sinai and they're serving, you know, matzah and, yeah, it's very and we're cute. at gate 49 that's and, awesome. and group 12, et cetera. So that saves time also, especially when you're, you know, I don't know about in your family, my, my kids sometimes fight over where they sit <laughs> and, uh, and this really solves that right. problem. It's just like very clear. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, yeah. That's great. Do you differentiate between the two star or it's, it's yes. really? I try not to do the same proper story. Ah, uh, really? Oh, so you're preparing a lot because you really... Yeah, yeah I, I try not to. I mean, the stories, they, they remember from year to year, so I don't have a fighting chance the second night. Uh -huh. um, and the props I want them to be excited about. You know, I had a conversation with my daughter tonight about the second Seder, and uh, she's like, sometimes it gets dull. And I'm like, that's why I save the best props for the second night. Ah, uh, interesting. Um, so th there are a lot of ways to, to... On my website, I have you can look at different ways to, to, to make the Seder come alive. I'm not going to go through every one now. Um, that are that are really exciting and little kids who who don't know the difference between magic and sleight of hand, um, you could do things that really really get them and like fascinating trying to figure out how you did it. Right, the pepper with the the pepper with the, yeah. If you yeah, take, that's good. If you take a bowl of water and cover it with black pepper and you stick your finger in it, so then it um, that then it doesn't do anything. But if you put a little Ajax, the the, the pepper goes, it splits. Right, right. Um, I was once in a dollar store. I found one of these. Um, it, it looks like a bandage with a nail coming on top in the bottom. Uh -huh. And yeah, I yeah, slipped sure. it out and I go, ow! And my little kid's like, oh my God, what happened? Is there a little blood and there's a nail coming on the top yeah. and the bottom. And they have no idea. I'm like, the mystery stuck a thing on my finger. I found in one of the dollar stores, one of these, looks like an ice cube with, yeah. a, with a bug inside of it. You know, mm -hmm. you get all types of lice. I, I, in my Parsha candy mind, you know, I have, um, I have a list of candies on my website that have to do with Pesach. So obviously gummy fish are, are an easy one, but oh, nice. they have red dots and uh, for 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 dom and they have uh, yeah, yeah, marshmallows yeah. with swirls um, and, and all. It's all about making you know it come alive. So totally, yeah, I I I, I have to make sure that the kids you know um, are looking forward to the second seder. Right. So you you can't do the same props, you can't do the same uh, stories, etc. For sure. One thing that's interesting, that I, you know, as we're talking, I'm just thinking for anyone who's going to a hotel who yeah. let's say can't really be hanging things up yeah. necessarily, whatever it is. What would you recommend for them to uh, not to go to a hotel? Not to. Go oh, <laughs> um, um, no. So so it's interesting, Molly, because I, I was speaking to somebody the other day who was going to a hotel. I said, you get a private room. He says. It's depressing. I said, right. He goes, because I'm only with me and my wife and two of our kids and they're five and under. It's, right, it's depressing. Right. He says, when you go to a big room, so you can't sing as much. So you, you, you put stuff. And listen, you don't want to be people staring at you because I don't know what goes on in hotels, but not everybody's doing shtick. Right. But, um, and, and I don't know how loud it is. Like so. reminds me of like Sukkot where like you hear, like it's like on the block, it's like who's singing louder? <laughs> you know, or, or they're, they're benching and you're answering. Yeah. Or they sneeze, you say, uh, Gesundheit. Um, it, it's, it's, I, I, I can't answer that question because I don't know how loud that is, and you have to be able to speak. But even if you have your own private room, I mean, right. you can't like even leading up to Pesach, you can't really. You can't set that up, but but that's uh, but you also don't have to worry about serving and cooking food, so you can focus more on the seder. Ah, nice. So th it comes with point. it comes with point. it comes with a with a with a you know offsetting, but you know, and 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 it's very much important. I want to mention that that the husband work in tandem with the wife if that is possible, um, because that will allow you know them to to the seder to go quicker. Uh, smoother, rather, you know. So, for example, I have written down in my Haggadah at some point that my wife c goes upstairs and comes down in a sweatshirt, and at the next paragraph, she starts pulling out six babies out of her sweatshirt, uh, nice. one at a time, um, and, and she'll know which props I'm going to do and not going to do, and I have that written down in my Haggadah. So when and the she has your Haggadah also? Like no, a, but I'll tell but her you, what, you just like, but, you, but you she gotta... knows what we're doing, and, and at some point she's got to get the, you know, the. at some point I'll give her the 15-minute warning, you know, you know, warm up the food for Shulchan Aruch. 
um, or, or put the matzah in the oven, whatever the case might be. So uh, I, I could tell you that if you have a private room, you could still come with props. Right. Um, if, if you're on the table, you could still set things on the table. Meaning I put things on the table to try to either get the kids to guess what that has to do with Pesach or just so they feel it. So so I have, besides my my, uh, my, my frogs, I have I have a big crocodile, I have my carbon Pesach, I have I have a dog, I have I have animals. You know, I'm not into the into the puppets, but you, you have animals over for 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 the for for Dever and, and it's it's really um it, it's 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 just setting the tone. You know, it, it doesn't have to be it doesn't have to be crazy props. It's 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 as I said, it's trying to get the kids involved and and you still have to get your kids involved even if they're older. But um, if you don't have the option, you don't have the option. You right. know what I'm saying? Right, for sure. As we wrap up, any any final message that you have to share on you know, Pesach, the Seder experience, anything, any, you know, final words? I, I can't underestimate the power of preparing. Um, Pesach is, is, a, is a powerful holy night, and uh, it shouldn't be lost in trying to get it over with. Um, your kids can look forward to the Seder for a long time if, if you properly prepare and give them the right message. Um, it's a lot of time. It's a lot of money, but it's well worth it. You know, bribing your kids is not always the right thing to do in the night of the Seder. I b- firmly believe it is. Um, just keep focused on the goal, and the goal is is not about you know saying a million different Torah. It's really about um, leaving your own mitzrayim and and prepare questions. Think about your own struggles that you've overcome or you have to overcome. And when your kids see that you have struggles, also, no, oh, it's normal to have struggles, and we got to overcome it and leave it. And um, you know, my seder is not perfect. <laughs> um, I think everybody wants to be at my seder except for my own kids. <laughs> um, um, I very much enjoy the Seder, but I, I, I've, I, I still get nervous before the Seder. Um, am I, am my message is going to come over and, 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 you know, what am I going to say and how the kids can react and you're going to have a cranky kid. And, and, you know, my kids sit like angels at the Seder and, and they sit saying, when can I help? No, they don't really. But um, <laughs> your kids are going to fight. I'm saying that, that, that you're going to have one kid that doesn't want to be there and you're right. going to have sure. and, and just be prepared for that. Just just come on the, the dinners. Punches, right? and, and if something doesn't work, stop and just drop it. You know, I don't care how much time you spend preparing that story or prop, just just drop it. Right. Um, and I, I, I would look at my website for ideas. Um, you know, the closer you get to Pesach, the harder it is to buy things that are linked to Amazon, but all of my ideas are free. All of my topics of conversations, all of my questions. Um, read through the questions because not every question is going to be applicable to your child right, because of right. their background or age. So, um, you know, I don't think I'm the most creative person in the world. I just care a lot about it, so I document it and share it with other people. Um, you know, there's a lot of Torah on there, but it's it's not meant for the Seder. It's, it's, it's really to get you get excited for Pesach, you know? So, so that's it. I, I just wouldn't lose the, 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 don't get bogged down on the props. It's, it's not about the props. It's about the message. That's right. what I think it is. Amazing. Well, thank you so much. For My taking greatest the pleasure. Time. Thank you for, really for helping people. Amazing. Um, I appreciate it. Shkaf. Thank you. Chag to you as well. Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of the Jews next door. I hope you enjoyed as much as I did. I'd love to hear your takeaways. Reach out to us. Reach out to me at yair at jenoff.org. Hi at jenoff.org. You can check us out on the website. You could leave a question there. We'd love to be in touch. Please be in touch. Check us out on Instagram at Parenting the Jews Next Door. Hit me up on Twitter at yeah, Your Man Shell. And we got, we're on TikTok now too. We have some great content, a lot of really great insights into parenting, tips, parenting pointers, reaction videos, and quotes. We have a lot going on. We have a lot of articles. You want to check it out. Check it out at jenoff.org. You won't be sorry you did. And I look forward to hearing from you. And if you haven't yet subscribed to the podcast, make sure you subscribe and share with your family and friends. Looking forward to another great episode next week.